This is Kyle Killingsworth from Catalyst Consultant Group. I'm here today with a friend of mine, David McLaughlin from Pendulum Coaching. We're going to talk a little bit about David's new podcast called The Mindful Leader. And I'm excited to be part of the launch, David. Um, and welcome. How are you? Thanks, Kyle. I am doing great. I've had an amazing day today. It's just been like a really fun day, a good day. Have had a lot of great stuff happen today. And now it's the greatest part. I get to talk to you today. Absolutely. Well, hey, we've got a couple of questions that we're curious about. Help All us right. out. Sure. Well, first, let's talk about your new company, Pendulum Coaching. What is this, what's that all about? Well, I have, uh, you know, I've been into mindfulness and meditation, that kind of stuff for about the last 10 years. And I've been working at the last company I was at for about 18 years. I was over learning and development, doing a lot of organizational development, that type of stuff there for 18 years. And finally, I just got to a place where I just decided that it was time to do the crazy thing and launch out and start my own business. And in doing that, I decided that I would, you know, I've been doing a lot of coaching and, uh, you know, coaching leaders. And rather than just being a leadership coach, which would have been kind of a natural thing to do, I thought I'd do the more daring thing and be a mindfulness coach for leaders. So that's what we're doing here at Pendulum Coaching and launched that in February. And that's that's what I'm doing. And I'm having a blast, having the time of my life doing that. And I'm super excited about it. Well, congratulations. And obviously, I've known you for a number of years. And that's that's one of your big passions. That's one of your big no. passions. So yeah, I'm I love happy it. for you that you can follow your passion. So let's talk a Thank little you. bit about the podcast. When did you decide to do this podcast and why the mindful leader? Yeah, well, the win is interesting. Right, right when I uh, left the last company, and I the first thing I did was I got in my car and I started driving across the country. I did a 16-state trek around the oh. country. I went out to the West Coast. I took this beautiful picture here. Uh, that's a uh, big sir. And and I went out to the West Coast and drove around, just did a lot of 7,400 miles, uh, 7,400 mile trip, three and a half weeks. And I just did a lot of thinking about what I wanted to do. And uh, I really, that's when I really thought about, you know, focusing on mindfulness. And uh, it was on that trip, actually, when I thought, you know, I, I should do a podcast with this. And I, I didn't, when I got back and really started focusing on the business, I didn't jump right into the podcast. I was doing a lot of other things, but there came a point where I just couldn't not do the podcast anymore. It was just kind of burning inside of me. Plus, I was the only white guy left who didn't have a podcast. And so that, that was kind of a driving part of it, too. I thought, you know, I'm a white guy. I don't have a podcast. So it's kind of just needed to do a podcast. So, uh, but I, that would you know, the mindfulness part of it, the mindful leader name kind of just evolved out of my business and what I do. I wanted to focus on leadership and mindfulness, combine those two things. And so I wanted the podcast not to be just me talking, but I wanted to interview guests. And that, that's what drove it. it was I had all these people that I wanted to talk to. And I thought, well, the best way to talk to them is just have the podcast interview those people and I thought that would be a lot of fun to do so that's that's how it all came together so so tell us a little bit more about the format like how long does each episode last yeah they're four hour uh podcast no they're not. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be that interested in it myself but no each interview uh, I we we chat with the people and, and all the episodes are already recorded so so I'm doing it in seasons so each season is 12 episodes. I've already recorded season one and they're, they're, it's coming out in a couple of weeks, but um, we've, we've recorded season one. I say we, me and the guests. So I lined up who I wanted to talk to. I asked them if they'd be willing to do it. Uh, I got the 12 people together and I, I interviewed them each episode. I interview the people for, you know, 40 to 50 minutes mm. That's that's how long the interviews last. And then at the end, I do about a 15 to 20 minute uh, meditation. And so I figured I'd put that on at the end 
Because if people mm. wanted to do the meditation, they could. If they didn't want to, they could like skip it. I'm out of here. I'm not interested in doing that. So that's just kind of an option that people can hang on. And it's something unique about this podcast, you know, that you don't get to meditate on a whole lot of podcasts. Mm -hmm. So that's something they can hear us and the guests talk about leadership and mindfulness. And then if they want to do what I do is after what, what I would do is I would interview the people and then I didn't know what I would do the meditation about. But after the interview, I would say, okay, there was this nugget in that interview that would make a great meditation topic. And so I did the meditation at the end uh, related to that point in the interview. So that's the format. I talked to him about 45, 50 minutes, and then we have a little 15, 20 minute meditation at the end. So you're releasing 12 episodes all at once. Right. It's kind of like if you think about Netflix or Hulu, a lot of those shows have a season and they release the season all at once okay. and people can binge, binge watch the season. So that's kind of how we did this. Uh, I think Malcolm Gladwell does his uh, podcast this way. You release the whole season. And the, one of the reasons I decided to do it that way is like when I'm driving on long trips, like if I go on a 16 state uh, <laughs> trip, when I'm listening to podcasts, when I listen to one podcast, I kind of get in that mood of that show and I like to listen to another episode. Okay. So sometimes I'll go back and I'll listen to several episodes all at once because I'm in that vibe and I want to listen to several episodes at once. And so it's nice when there are several episodes that people can listen to. So that's why I wanted to release all the episodes at once. Some people will like to listen to several episodes at one time. Other people don't like to listen to that way, but at least by having all of the episodes mm -hmm. out there, people have the option to listen to however they want to. And what I'll also do is I'll feature one episode a week. Like they'll all be out there, but some people will just want to listen mm -hmm. to one a week or something. So we'll highlight one episode each week and still promote one episode a week. Okay. Tell us about who you have on the show. Yeah, I, this is like the most exciting part for me. You know, I called up a lot of friends. Uh, most of these people I knew, there are a couple that I didn't know really well, but there were people that I wanted to talk to. So I'll just run through the list as quick as I can here, tell you just a tiny bit about them. And, and I did these interviews, not necessarily in the order that I'm going to list them, but the order I'm listing them now is the order that I put them on in the show. Mm -hmm. So uh, first week is Linda Clark. Um, Linda is a consultant here in Oklahoma City, and she does a lot of speaking. And we talk, oh, it'll be, if I start listening what we talk about, some I'll remember better than others. But with Linda, we talk a lot about um, courage, I remember. There, there were some other things we talked about, but uh, courage is one of the big things. Um, Bruce Waller out of Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, we talked about uh leadership obviously he's he's got a great podcast called the leadership lane and he's written mm -hmm. some books on leadership and we talk about his books and some different topics in his books that i kind of highlighted i talked to hal adler hal is a friend of mine uh, i used to use him as a consultant a lot uh, at the company i worked uh, for and hal used to be the president of the great place to work institute and he's had his own consulting and coaching business for a long time um, hal is great uh, with mindfulness in particular. And we, we talked a whole lot about mindfulness and uh, the five attributes of a great leader. Then I have Tim Hast. Uh, Tim is a great coach and a consultant and speaker. Tim wrote a book on listening. And so we talk about listening a lot. Marlene Chisholm is uh, out of St. Louis. And I, I met her uh, several years ago. Uh, she's a speaker and an author. And she uh, has written on drama and uh, courage. And her latest book is called From Courage to Conflict. And we talk mm -hmm. about that book. She has, she, like, everybody's so good. She drops some of the most amazing just truth bombs. And she's so insightful. Then uh, a guy named Scott Ginsburg. His is maybe the most unusual uh, in the batch. Um, he, he's kind of known as Scott, the name tag guy. Name uh, tag Scott. Wearing, name tag Scott. Uh, he's been wearing a, a name tag for 
uh, 8,000 days. He's approaching 8,000 days, 24 seven. He's in the Guinness book of world records. And he, he, he's kind of known for approachability. We talk about that a little bit. We also talk about creativity and being prolific and just some really great insights. Then we talked to Linda Jenkins. She's out of Tulsa. She's a nonprofit uh, leadership consultant. And we talked to her about, um, inclusive language, just a great conversation there. Then we talked to, excuse me, to Greg Hawks. Um, Greg's a great friend of mine and um, he's a speaker and he talks about uh, bringing your best daily, a great conversation there. Then uh, Scott Ginsburg was really unusual. And then another unusual one is Linda Abbott. And uh, Linda wrote a book called The Conscious Caregiver and hers is less about leadership. I'd say it's more about mindful living. Um, my mom passed away last November and her book, uh, I'd never heard of her before, just ran across her book while uh, taking care of uh, our mom. And it's about, you know, being mindful while uh, caregiving. And it was a really influential book for me and I wanted to talk to her and it was a great conversation about caregiving. So, so it's a little uh, different topic there a little bit, but definitely about mindfulness in that. A really great conversation. There we go. All right. Okay. Sorry, everybody. I had a problem with the battery on my laptop. I forgot to plug it in. Okay. So Minette Norman, I met her through Hal Adler. Um, she's up in the Bay Area in Northern California. I'm trying to remember exactly what it was we talked about. She has so many great things. Uh, she talks about a lot of DEI topics, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I'm trying to remember exactly which one we focused in on. I, I've had a lot of great conversations with Minette. Um, I feel awful that I can't remember. Oh, let me. Inclusive leadership and psychological safety. That's what we okay. talked about her with. Um, and then Jason Jones out of uh, Dallas um, talked uh, with Jason about uh, his book called Activator and a, a great book about uh, leadership and uh, neuroscience. And then the last episode, uh, last but not least, is a guy that uh, is my personal favorite leader to me. And his name is Brett Berriman. And Brett and I worked together uh, at the last company for many years. And he was on our HR management team. And just when I look at who is a mindful leader and who is just my personal leadership hero, you know, if you ever sit in a class and people say, who's your favorite leader? People say, you know, presidents or their father or whoever, all these different people, I always say, Brett Berriman, because he is just an amazing guy. And I was so excited, Kyle, to interview Brett. He retired a couple years ago and I called up Brett and I said, hey, can I interview you? And he's like, I don't know why you want to interview me. And I'm <laughs> like, because you're my favorite leader and I want to pick your brain on how you did it. So I had a great interview with Brett. So that's who we interviewed for the show. And I'll tell you, Kyle, it was so energizing, invigorating. And it was so exciting having these conversations with people. And I'm super excited for everybody to hear these interviews. Yeah. And we're, we're excited about hearing them. What a great lineup. So you have, I'm going to limit you to two. Okay. Two favorite guests out of that lineup. Well, you know, I love music. And um, if you ask songwriters, like, what are their favorite songs? They usually say that's like picking your favorite kids, right? <laughs> and so when I think who were like my favorite guests, I can tell you that when at the end of every interview, like I remember doing the first interview, the first person I interviewed was Greg Hawks. And at the end of that interview, I was like, man, it's not going to get any better than this. And then I did the second interview and I was like, man, it's not going to get any better than this. I did the third interview and I was like, man, it's not going to get any better than this. At the end of every single interview, I just thought, this is the best interview. 
So my favorite interview each time was whichever one I finished right then was my favorite interview because it was each interview was so great. I, I, I don't know how to pick a favorite out of these. If, if I had to pick one, maybe Brett, just because he's my personal favorite, you know, interview. But outside of that, I don't know how to pick a, a favorite. It, it, they, they were just all so great. Fair enough. Fair enough. What about favorite moments? Ooh. Do you have um, any favorite moments that you can think of? Yeah, a couple thoughts come to mind. So, you know, Kyle, you and I are, aren't spring chickens, right? Okay, so you and I have, have been doing this for quite a while. And, you know, you and I will sit in um, uh, conferences and in, in meetings and we hear people talk and there's not a whole lot anymore that we haven't heard people say before. You know what I mean? Like, like we, we kind of hear like, okay, I've heard that before. I've heard that before. So that's one of the things I love about these discussions is when I'm having these conversations with people, it's just like, like you and I are talking right now. It's just a conversation. And so my two favorite moments are not specific moments, but they're the moments in these conversations and they happen in every single episode when, ooh, I hadn't thought of that before. Hmm. Ooh, I hadn't heard it put quite that way before, you know, because these are some stinking smart people I'm talking to. That's why I asked them to be on the show, right? <laughs> like I wanted to talk to the best of the best, you know, and I'm like, I'm, I'm listening to some really smart people. And when they say things that I'm just like, ooh, that's, that's good. So, so that's, that's a favorite moment is just when I hear these people drop some truth bombs that really make me go, wow, that, that's, I love that. The second favorite moment would be we have a segment on the show that I call the Music Minute. But, and it's just like we just take a few minutes, like three or four minutes each episode, and I just ask them, what's, what's your favorite music? Because I just believe you can learn about people by the music they like. And just hearing these people and like, okay, let's stop with the leadership and the mindfulness and all that for a minute. What kind of music do you like? I love that. Let's do it right now. Kyle Killingsworth. Tell me what kind of music you love. What kind of, who are some of your favorite artists, maybe favorite albums, songs, concerts? Who, what, what do you love? Well, I, I'm going to be a little bit different and maybe surprise you with this, but I like Baroque classical music the best. Vivaldi would be my mm -hmm. favorite. But I listen to a lot of classical music. When I have, when I have the option to, yeah. that's my go-to. That's right. my go-to. Okay. What, what else do you like? What other kind of music does Kyle I like jazz. I like jazz yeah. music. Uh, I, you know, it's... it's uh, relaxing to me and also interesting at the same time. Right. Um, but I would say those were two of my go-tos. If there was music in my house, like just playing continuously, it would be either some type of classical music, light classical music, or some, some jazz. Okay. So who's your favorite classical artist and who's your favorite jazz artist? Okay. Classical would be the Italian uh, uh, composer, uh, which slipped by name Vivaldi, and then uh, jazz artist. Um, oh, I could not name. You know that's that's one of those impossible things. That like you picking your before. child, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So who's 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 one or two favorite jazz artists? Like like just somebody that you really like? Um, I don't. You know. She may not be classified a jazz artist, but I like Diana Kroll, her yeah, piano. Yeah, she's amazing. Right. Yeah, she's I, amazing. I, I enjoy, I enjoy uh, her a lot. I've been to a couple of her concerts, and you'd appreciate that because you're a concert goer. Yeah. But yeah, but let, let, let's shift it back to you. You okay, love so music so just much. Minute, just a minute. See, isn't that great? See, we learned something about you and who you are just in that, that three minutes. Yeah. We, we look, that, that's one of my favorite moments. That of music episode. moment, I love that music that. minute. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. That's a good example. But you, you mentioned you love music so much. What about a theme song for the podcast? Do you have a theme song? 
we do have a theme song. So I had a podcast years and years and years and years and years and years and years ago. And I have a friend in Nashville and I paid him to create a theme song for me. And I was actually Ooh. thinking about using that theme song for this one. And I looked around and I couldn't find it. That was like five computers ago, right? <laughs> so I couldn't find it. And so I thought about having to make me a new one, but I wanted to get going faster on doing this. So I actually went online and there's different companies and there's a bunch of them out there. And I found one that I really liked. I went through, I don't know, a hundred different wow. ones. I, I wanted to find just the right one, but I found one online and I bought it and I licensed it and I found it and it's a great one. And I love it for me. I just, it has just the right vibe and it's got like this little part in it where it's like, it's going do, 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 and then it stops. And it goes, boom. And so every time when I hear it, it's like that little drum feel. I just like, it's kind of like in the air tonight, you know, by Phil Collins when it goes, do, 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 do. Mm. It's, and everybody has to do that. Well, it's, a, it's not the same drum feel, but I just like when it stops and it goes, da, 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 da. so I just, I do, I love that little drum feel in it. So yeah, I've got, it's got its own theme song. It's got a great little drum feel in it. I love it. I'm excited about the theme song too. So, so I've got a couple more questions about the mindful later, but just off the wall, and I got to ask you a question: pineapple on pizza, yes or no? Yes, occasionally. I have to be in the right mood, okay. like the, not the, all the time. The judges not, are not going to like that answer. The judges, no fruit on pizza. I, no this fruit is like on pizza. Maybe, this is like maybe a once every two years thing for me. Like on rare occasions, I'm like, you know what? I, I, I can do this right now. Okay. The, judges, the, time. Are, the judges are disappointed. Yeah, Back to the. Right. <laughs> so, so who is the mindful leader? Yeah, that's, that, that's a good question. Who is So the mindful leader and who, who is that? So I, I, I thought about this. Uh, before I started the show, like who, who is the mindful leader? Am I the mindful leader? Are you the mindful leader? And so I decided there's, there's several. So there, there's three mindful leaders. So the mindful leader, first of all, is the guest that I'm interviewing. Okay. They're the mindful leader. We're talking to them. They're, they're the expert. They're, they're the mindful leader. I thought I'm the mindful leader as the host. I'm, I've, I've got some expertise in this as well. I'm kind of guiding the conversation. I'm the mindful leader. But I think even most importantly, the listener is, is the mindful leader. Mm. And so they're, they're, they're learning, they're growing, they have expertise, they have their thoughts that they bring to it as well. And so really, like, we're all the mindful leader and we're all growing and all that. So it, I, I kind of thought through that, who is the mindful leader? And so we're, we're all the mindful leader. So when does the uh, podcast come out and, and how can we find it, David? Yeah, I'm, I'm so excited, Kyle. Like I'm just kind of busting at the seams. You can probably tell. Um, I can't wait. I'll tell you, it doesn't come out soon enough. <laughs> but uh, and I, I don't have the exact date yet. I wish I did. I'm, I'm working all the technical uh, side of this out. But very early August, um, you and I are talking on. My eyes are bad. I had to back up to see mid July. July four. July 14th, um, it will be uh, very early August. And the way to find it, the best way to find it is just go to pendulumcoaching.com. And um, if you sign up for our weekly email newsletter mm -hmm. on the front page of pendulumcoaching.com, you can sign up for the weekly email newsletter and we will notify you there. That's how you know about anything that we're doing here. But um, we'll notify you there as soon as it comes out. And that's the best way to okay. uh, find out. Pendulumcoaching.com. Sign up for the newsletter and you'll find the link on there around the beginning of August. That's great. Best of luck. Best Thank of luck you. with the podcast. And we're anxious. Yeah. We're anxious to uh, for the premiere. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, asking about it and uh, doing this interview. I'm super pumped. Okay. Great to talk to you, David. Great to see you. Best of luck with Thanks. the podcast and the Mindful Leaders podcast with Pimlin Coaching. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for your time. All the best.